immunotherapy is the most exciting area for new cancer treatment today. In multiple myeloma, I personally have been looking for monoclonal antibodies to target the tumor cells for over 35 years. And uh, I'm very, very thrilled to say that uh, this year, for the very first time, we have not one but two uh, targeted monoclonal antibodies that will be coming for approval based on remarkable efficacy and will become part of our armamentarian for treatment of this disease. It's very, very special. The first of them I'll mention is elatuzumab. Uh, this monoclonal antibody targets a uh, SLAM F7 antigen. Uh, we and others found this antigen to be on tumor cells at the, si at the bedside. We brought that observation of anti antigen expression universally in patients back to the laboratory and we showed that the antibody elatuzumab could kill these antigen positive myeloma cells. As a consequence, it went back from the laboratory or bench to the bedside, and a clinical trial of elatuzumab as a single agent achieved stable disease in advanced relapsed refractory myeloma, but really no responses. Fortunately, this observation went back from the clinic to the lab again, where lenalidomide was added to this elatuzumab antibody and markedly increased in preclinical studies antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity. Then back to the clinic, and the initial phase 1-2 clinical trials showed that elatuzumab lenalidomide dexamethasone achieved 80 to 90 percent responses lasting 33 months, even in high-risk myeloma. So as a consequence, we have the eloquent trials which are large randomized trials in relapsed refractory myeloma and in newly diagnosed myeloma. In each of these large randomized trials, there's a comparison of lenalidomide dexamethasone versus lenalidomide dexamethasone and elatuzumab. Presented at ASCO this year is the relapsed myeloma trial, which is markedly positive. It shows that elatuzumab, dexamethasone plus um, lenalidomide extends progression-free survival with a trend towards overall survival uh, versus lenalidomide dexamethasone alone in patients who have had one to three prior therapies. There also is an increase in the overall response rate when one uses lenalidomide dexamethasone with elatuzumab versus lenalidomide dexamethasone alone. Now, when one looks at the subgroup analysis of this trial, and this is a very important point, high-risk myeloma, 17P deletion, for example, apparently responds to the immune therapy, in this case, elatuzumab, uh, very favorably. In other words, to put it plainly, monoclonal antibodies binding to the cell surface of a tumor cell can apparently be active in spite of the genetic adverse features that may be occurring within the cancer cell that are either there initially or acquired as the disease becomes relapsed and refractory. Now, elatuzumab not only has the activity of antibody-dependent cellular cytotoxicity, there's also complement-dependent cytotoxicity that's conferred by this antibody. And the antigen SLAMF7 is expressed on natural killer cells. As it turns out, elatuzumab, by reacting with SLAMF7 on natural killer cells, is an activator of uh, their activity. So there's two different positive actions of this particular antibody, one directly targeting the tumor cell and one augmenting the activity of the effector cell. So elatuzumab, lenalidomide, dexamethasone is highly likely to get a regulatory approval uh, in the very near future and will offer an exciting uh, regimen even in currently virtually untreatable myeloma. The second uh, monoclonal antibody class targets an antigen called CD38 on myeloma cells. I actually found CD38 on myeloma cells in 1983 
and you might ask why we didn't pursue it earlier. This antigen is actually expressed quite broadly on other cells, such as activated immune cells or endothelial cells, or 50% of hematopoietic progenitor cells express this antigen. So there was concern by us and others that we might not be able to use an antibody targeting this antigen and achieve a favorable therapeutic window or therapeutic index. Suffice it to say, daratumumab, which targets CD38, is extremely exciting because it mediates antibody-dependent uh, cellular cytotoxicity. It mediates complement-dependent cytotoxicity. If you cross-link CD38 on the surface of a myeloma cell, it triggers the death of the myeloma cell, and it inhibits the CD38 enzymatic activity. So far, it has been extremely well tolerated. In particular, there hasn't been major effects on blood counts or on the immune uh, system of the treated patients. The reason it's so exciting is that as a single agent, it does have activity in the range of 30 to 40 percent responses, even in multiply relapsed, relapsed refractory myeloma again, including high-risk disease, 17P deletion. Now, as is was true for elituzumab, so it's true here for daratumumab, lenalidomide added to daratumumab further augments the response. And so we have randomized trials now of lenalidomide, dexamethasone, and daratumumab versus lenalidomide, dexamethasone that are extremely positive as well. So we're very, very excited that we have now, for the very first time in multiple myeloma, the first generation immune therapy monoclonal antibodies, and the first two to be approved in the relatively near future, both highlighted at the American Society of Clinical Oncology this year, are elituzumab and daratumumab both of which are active, but both of which are augmented in their activity when you add lenalidomide dexamethasone. And I'll just add that combination immune approaches, in my opinion, are the future. And so this is the first example in multiple myeloma. The immunomodulatory drug lenalidomide activates natural killer cells, T cells, natural killer T cell hybrid cells, and lenalidomide also targets regulatory T cells and inhibits them. If you combine that with an antibody, as is demonstrated here with both elituzumab and daratumumab, you can get synergistic cytotoxicity. So this concept of combination targeted agents extends to immune treatments. We're talking about combinations again, but it's combinations of immune therapies. Monoclonal antibodies are brand new in myeloma and have been studied primarily in relapsed or relapsed refractory disease. They have shown uh, high response rates and extent of response, even in high-risk disease, and now are being moved earlier into the disease course on the one hand and are also being studied as maintenance treatments on the other. So in the future, I think what you will see is that there will be targeted agents in the initial management. We know they're very effective already. Lenalidomide, bortezomib, dexamethasone, lenalidomide, carfilzomib, dexamethasone, soon lenalidomide, exazomib, dexamethasone, that kind of a combination. But yes, a fourth class, the monoclonal antibodies, will be added and, is, in fact, uh, clinical trials are already ongoing to see whether, in fact, adding a monoclonal antibody to an already active combination of targeted treatments can ex increase the response or extend the progression for your overall survival. In terms of the uh, non-transplant or transplant patients, antibodies offer the opportunity to uh, maintain responses in either setting. We know in lymphoma, the antibody uh, rituximab has been used as a maintenance therapy in the past, and so it's possible here that we can incorporate either elituzumab or daratumumab 
after treatment and in so doing have another effective maintenance treatment. I want to highlight that the antibodies and immune treatments apparently can work even in high risk disease. So that's a very important concept. Patients who start with high risk disease or all patients who end up getting multiple relapses will have their disease evolve to high risk. So the fact that we have monoclonal antibodies that are active even in that setting is a major advance. In terms of picking one antibody versus another at the present time, I honestly think we can't do that. Um, we're blessed because we have two different targets, SLAM F7 for elituzumab and CD38 for daratumumab. Um, they both have activity. Um, it is true daratumumab has single agent activity. Elituzumab's activity is primarily in the context of lenalidomide dexamethasone. Honestly, I think, as I've mentioned, that combinations are the future anyway. So I do think in majority of cases it's going to be lenalidomide dexamethasone and one of these antibodies. Uh, and um, we really don't know right now uh, which is better. Both are very active and both are well tolerated. In terms of choosing between elituzumab and daratumumab, I honestly think we can't really do that at the present time. I look at it as an incredible positive because both of these agents, especially combined with lenalidomide and dexamethasone, offer us a treatment for patients who previously had none. And this includes patients who have high risk multiple myeloma, either initially or whose disease has progressed to high risk uh, uh, status by virtue of multiple relapses. So these are patients who were treatable before who now are having a very effective and durable uh, responses to these novel antibodies.